this is Mary over here with images on the page. Today I'm going to be doing the unhaul challenge, which is kind of why I'm standing, not sitting. Um, I decided to do this challenge mostly because I was watching Brushing Bookends, their Art of the Book tag, which was really awesome. So if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. Um, because I haven't really seen one of those on BookTube, but I was kind of answering them in my head as they were doing the different tap not tags questions and I realize I like talk about the same like 10 books when I do those tags um and that I don't really think about probably at least 60% of the books on my bookshelves so I decided I would do the unhaul challenge it was created by books and Lala which I'll link down below and I saw it over at Chelsea Doling Reads um she did an unhaul, an unhaul a while ago, but she did another one. She did this challenge. She gets rid of like five books, a, a question or a category or something like that. She does like, she gets rid of quite a few. Um, I realize I've never quite shown you what my book room, and I call it my library, looks like. Right now it's a mess, but I guess I can give you a quick rundown. So these... So these are my two shelves, they are, um, are bookshelves, these are, they're five shelves, and I have some more books right here because I use them for videos sometime, and then this is, funny enough, this is my video setup, um, because I just have an itty bitty tripod and I need it to be taller, oh, and then this is the one I keep all my cookbooks, student books that I had, anything like that, more like academic books. And if any of you guys saw my one of my vlogs for the Sapphic Readathon, my TBR is actually downstairs. So for a couple of those, we're gonna be running down there to answer these questions. But let's go ahead and get into it. So I have them written down. So the first one is a book you rated low. So, probably 95 to 98% of these books I've actually read before I started BookTube. Um, so I'm going to kind of just not base it on that. There are a few here that I don't know if I can answer because it's based on, like, BookTube, but we'll see. Um, so a book I rated low. I'm choosing The Magician's Apprentice by Trudy Can Canavan. Um, I read it because it's like the prequel to her... It's the prequel to her Black Magician trilogy, which I did really love. Um, but this was just so slow. And I understand why, because it's setting up the like magic system that happens in the Black Magician trilogy, like the university and stuff like that, but it's just... How long is this? 777 pages long and it did not need to be this long like it nothing happened until like here like 600 pages in so I'm gonna get rid of that so number two is a book you changed your mind about I choose Stormglass by Maria V Schneider I really love her Poison Study series, um, well at least the first three I haven't read. I think it continues or they're shorts or whatever. Um, I've only read the first three, so Poison Study, Magic Study, and Fire Study, and this is kind of like a spin-off of that world. It's about one of the characters that we meet in the Poison Study series, and it's a lot more YA than her other books. Her other books I would term like new adult, because Yelena, the main character in that, is like 20. Um, but this is definitely YA, and I'm just really picky about my YA, YA, and I didn't, like, I liked it fine, but I just find myself liking it less as time goes on. A series you won't be completing. I choose The Last Appren uh, Apprentice, Revenge of the Witch, I believe The Last Apprentice is the series, by Joseph Delaney. I read this many, 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 many years ago. It's also why it's about, like, the seventh son of the seventh son has, like, 
magic or whatever and he goes nope that's a different one <laughs> he I don't I don't really remember what happens but he ends up becoming like a ghost hunter type thing and I really enjoyed it but I just there's like I don't know how many now I've only read the first one and I don't plan on reading them I don't plan on rereading them so yeah also if anyone was curious um, a lot of my books you can see have this like slight shine to them that is actually because I cover my books in clear contact paper. I don't know if you can see yeah, where the difference is. Um, maybe I'll do a book showing how I do that or do a video sh talking about how I do that just because I like them because it helps with the binding I believe in that way it kind of protects them. It gives them a bit more structure and I just feel like it protects them. I could be wrong. So a book you have multiple copies of. I don't actually think I have any. Yeah, when we go down to my TBR shelf, we'll have to check there, but I'm almost positive I don't have any duplicate copies of any book. So actually, the rest of these are down in my, at my TBR shelf. So I will see you down there. Just because no one's ever gotten a good look at him. Say hi to Wally. Hi, bud. Hey, everyone. I'm back. So this is my TBR shelf. It's downstairs mostly because it's easier to get to. My room's literally like right there. Um, so if I actually grab stuff off of it, it's there so I have to haul my butt all the way upstairs. So it's a it's a big mess right now. So you can't see it, but some of the stuff I have, I have a few books up there. Those I've actually read, but I, as I mentioned earlier, I go through this process where, well, I haven't actually mentioned this earlier. I read them and if they're soft cover, I actually cover them in clear contact paper and then they go upstairs into my library. Um, those ones haven't been covered yet, so they're down here until I get around to doing them. I usually wait until I have a couple because it's a little time consuming, but it's really easy. So I don't wanna just do one and then be done. Like I kind of wanna do a couple cause I'll watch TV while I do it. A book you DNF'd. I d didn't actually, let me see if I can find it. So I'm getting rid of the King Shield Legacy it's a fantasy book. Um, I was really interested in it when I read it. I tried reading it. I got to page 122 sometime like in the middle of last year and I just never got around to picking it back up. Didn't want to. Haven't really thought about it. So I mean I guess I DNF'd it. I just kind of put it down and never returned to it. So this is number two in the Stormglass series. Um, by M Maria V. Schneider. Wally is trying to get up on my desk. Um, I, like, I, this was the one, the series I was never gonna complete. I forgot I had number two, so I'm gonna get rid of that too. Come here. This is Wally. He's being a menace. I don't know why he wants to get up on my desk. Okay. So... The next one is a book you will never actually get to. So this I take as something that you keep telling yourself you're going to read and then you don't. You always find something else to read. So for this one I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with a few. So I chose, so far I've only done one per thing, I chose four for this one. Um, I chose, I'm going to find the dust jacket for this, I chose Infinity. I don't know, by Sherilyn Kenyon. Um, I read her Dark Hunter series. There's like 30 in that series. This is a YA from one of the characters who was adult in that series. This is when he was a kid. Um, I know there's like four in this series. I just, never getting to it, never getting to it. I've had it for years. Next one is The Back Passage. Oh, it's shiny by James Lear. It's um, a gay mystery, I believe, and the writing style is very like, it feels very like classical and old timey, and that's just not what I like, and it's set like in old Victorian England, and I don't really like stuff set in later time periods unless it's like medieval, um, so I'm not keeping this one. The other one is The Paradise War by Stephen Lawhead. I actually don't know anything about this book. Um, 
I think it sounded interesting when I read it. Not happening. And then this one is Luna by Julie Ann Peters. Um, I was supposed to, I, I read, I've actually read parts of this because you can see the tabs. Um, I was supposed to read this for one of my community college classes. Um, I think it was like LGBTQ fiction, something like that. Um, it's about a girl whose sibling is transgender and kind of about her dealing with that. And I'm just, it's YA, it's, I mean, it sounds awesome. It's just really, it's contemporary. It's just really not up my alley. Not a big contemporary reader. A book you bought because of the hype. Like I said, I don't... A lot of these are I got before I started booktube, so I'll go with this one. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. So I actually own the graphic novel of this, which I did really enjoy. And I have the second one, which I might ever get to. Um, but I watched the movie and I, was, I f didn't know half of what was going on. So I thought I'd read the book to see what I missed because of the graphic novel. I'm not. I'm not. And a book you bought because of the cover. I don't really cover by a lot. Um, I do read the synopsises and I could care, I mean, I care a little what the cover looks like, but it's not a really big deciding factor for me, especially because I read a lot of fantasy and I hate a lot of fantasy covers, especially like when it went through the phase where it was always like a tough, scantily clad woman on the front with like explosions behind her or like sparkly colors. I guess I actually have two I bought because of the cover. So we have Dragon Wing by Margaret Wiss and Tracy Hickman. I'm pretty sure I read the synopsis when I bought it, um, but I have no idea what it's about now. So I'll call it a cover buy because that definitely is what drew me to it. It is got a dragon on it with a guy riding it. Looks really interesting. This one is The Oracle Betrayed. I probably just really liked the title. I'm more of a title buy person. Like, that's what draws me more than the cover, especially because half the time they're like spine out, not cover out. So yeah. Next one is a book you don't know anything about. So as I've been going through this, I noticed there's like many of those. So I'm gonna have a lot for this. All but two are by David Eddings. I remember, um, and he got me like the fourth in a book or something like that. So I think I bought these in the hopes, because I bought like one and two. Um, I know they're fantasy. I can tell just by the covers, because I mean, look at that. It's definitely a fantasy cover. I honestly have no idea what any of them wrote. Absolutely none. And I don't care to find out. This one, I don't even remember buying this one, honestly. For all I know, it was given to me. Um, I just quickly read the back. I guess it's a short story collection. Oh, there's three in here that are not by David Eddings. The next one is Jennifer Fallon, The Immortal Prince. I really liked one of her series. It was the Second Brother series, I think. The first one is called The Lion of Senate. But I haven't really been enticed to pick up her other books. Don't want to keep it. Last one is by David Keck. I think Keek, Keck. Um, in the Eye of Heaven. Also have no idea what this is about. And then the last one, a book you didn't buy. Honestly, I buy most of my books because, so I'll usually ask for like a gift card or ask for a specific book, but there is a series and it is, series is Lost Years of Merlin by T.A. Barron. A friend got these from me when I was in college because I really liked, I really like King Arthur and like the Merlin story. I'm really drawn to that. But I just, I have never felt compelled, com compelled to pick these up. I've had them um, for like five years now. But so yeah, let me see what the total is. There are 26 books. Um, but I actually think I might go back upstairs and get rid of a few more that I don't want to keep anymore. So let's do that. When this is all done, I'll actually do a bookshelf tour so you can kind of understand my process for my bookshelves because they are actually full all the way to the bottom. But I'm going to get rid of all these mysteries. Most of them are Sharon, 
Sala. I do remember enjoying them a lot. There's one by Beverly Barton and one by Jan Ross. But I have no interest to really reread. I have a hard time rereading mysteries just because um, even if it's been like years since I read it, if I remember even bits and pieces, I can start to put it together and I'll remember who the killer is. And the part of the mystery is finding that out. So, um, the Charlie Bone series, two through six here. I think there's like seven and eight. I haven't ever finished the series. If I do, I'll listen to it on audiobook. I don't remember if I ever told you guys this, but for a while there, I was very into just like romance books. Um, because I thought they were naughty. So I collected almost all of like Linda Lael Miller's books and Linda Howard's books. Linda Howard was definitely my favorite. Um, I keep some of them. Christine Fihan. Um, she had two different series at least that I read. One is like a take on vampires where they're like vampires until they meet their true love and then they can see in color and all that stuff. She had a shifter one. The one I really enjoyed was her game series um, because it was a little bit more psychological and like suspenseful. Sherilyn Kenyon, most of them are her Dragon Hunter series. Um, some of her, her, I think it's their League series or Born series. I did keep some of them. You can kind of see the stack right here. here. So I'm gonna call that good for today. I just destroyed my shelves. I gotta fix that now. That's gonna be fun. But let me see what the new total is. I'm gonna say I have 70 here because they all just fell over. I'm not recounting them. And 26 downstairs. So that is a total of 96. I got rid of almost 100 books. And I only have, well I have three bookshelves. Four if you count my academic one, but I didn't pull anything from them. So I will be back with you to do a book tour once I fix my shelves because always this is going to be a mess because uh, yeah. Well, until the next video, ta-ta for now.